파이팅! 아, 어, 내려 싸울. 오케이. 자, 지금보이는 7시 진영이 하나 졌습니다. At the bottom left. As the Oprah Doss. We have Sky. 0-1 in this series. 그렇죠. 뭔가 지금 얼어있는 느낌이고 할 수도 좀 I wonder if he practiced wearing a suit as well. You know, just in preparation of the tournament. He just spent the last week just wearing a suit by himself at home. <laughs> just to get comfortable in it. Anyway. Uh, oh, wow. For a second. Oh, hold on. You guys see that on the minimap? How the neutral building is yellow? I was like, holy shit. How did, how did Sky already build a building like right outside Larva's base? But no, actually, that's a neutral building. Interestingly, that Overlord is going to see the probe, so now he knows uh, where the uh, where the pearl spawns. So that's that's exactly why you send the Overlord towards the middle of the map like that on a four player uh, on a four player map just to see uh, when or sorry, see which direction the probe comes from. And uh, luckily for uh, for Sky, he's actually going to see a nine pool here. So any thoughts he had of uh, of Nexus firsting again should go straight out the window. Yeah, we can see he's just built a forge now, so he should be completely fine. This is an interesting choice uh, from Larva here to uh, to throw in a nine pool here. I believe last game was in fact an over pool just from the timings there. But going for a nine pool this game, and the thing is, this map you can do some tricksy things because of those uh, back. Uh, what do you call them? Side disruptors? I think they're actually side disruptors. I hope, I hope they click on one so I can double check. I can never remember. And oh, a drone dies though! A drone goes down! Oh my god! Larva just went 9 pool and lost a drone to a probe. That is horrendous. Like, more so than usual. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, he doesn't need 6 links here. So he's actually thinking about doing something. And look at this, Sky has actually decided to make the gateway before the Nexus. That's how actually scared he is of this, uh, of this nine pool here. I'm not sure if that's n really necessary. I mean, the distance from the main to the, na the main mineral line to that natural block is a little bit far, so uh, if you did have to do an emergency pro pool, it probably wouldn't get there in time. I suppose that might be part of his reasoning here, but still, that uh, seems very interesting to me. Larva, meanwhile, has actually taken the uh, top right natural as uh, basically his, his second base, rather. So. Yeah, he's expanded there first rather than expand to his natural, which is interesting. He's kind of faking out the Protoss a little bit, but given that Sky doesn't really see too much going on in the base, you can probably assume there is a hatchery somewhere. Um, now the thing is, there is only one cannon here, so six things can actually kill this. I'm not exactly sure how the wall works out. Presumably, Sky knows how to wall this, and that's actually tight uh, below the forge as well, so the things would have to run around the top of the gateway there. But, uh... But... But six links is supposed to supposed to be able to take down uh, one cannon. I guess there were actually only five at the front because one of them is chasing the probe. But I think five links, you can at least you know do a run by and get two or three of them in. Maybe you just didn't want to do that. And one's also actually going to poke around here and get two of those links uh, killed. So not exactly a good start at all for Larva here. Um, his only saving grace really is that the Protoss natural was delayed quite a bit, so, you know, even though he lost that early drone, uh, even though he's got kind of a weird expansion order here, I guess, uh, it's not, or rather it's somewhat mitigated by that super late Nexus. I wonder actually if, uh, if Sky's gonna try and make some more results here and put on some pressure with that early gateway. Because um, of course, you know, that gateway did finish unusually early, and a lot of times uh, when the Zerg player does open with a 9 pool, he doesn't necessarily follow up with a lot of Zerglings. I mean, you know, obviously you can just, you know, get speed and just go for Zergling, uh, run by or all in or whatever, but a lot of times the Zerg will try and, uh, 
use the early links to like deny probe scouts very aggressively and things like that, and just play more greedily behind it. So you know, drone up a little bit heavier, uh, cut a few corners here and there, just to make up for the fact that the opening uh, wasn't exactly uh, the most economic. But Sky is uh, not going to give him the chance for that. He's just immediately moving out with these two zealots, not at all concerned uh, about. Uh, about Zerglings, and looks like now he's going to split up because uh, there's no way two Zealots going to take on those eight Zerglings here. A couple more Zerglings even being made by uh, by Larva, but oh, he's going to lose a drone? Nope. Can we able to save that? It's going to force him to do a bit of multitasking here, and the Zealot finding the perfect little spot here behind the mineral line. Going to get two of these Zerglings. Probably going to get that third one, in fact. No, not quite. Took a bit too much damage before that. And the other Zealot's going to try and run away home. I'm a little bit surprised the Zerglings are actually not chasing that. Uh, if you look at the minimap, the Zerglings are actually spreading out. I think he, uh, I think Larva is actually a little bit concerned that another Zealot snuck out and is like going to try and uh, attack his third base while if he tries to chase down that that retreating Zealot or something like that, uh, which it did look like was the case. There was something moving out there for a while, but then it, then everything got pulled back. So, uh, so it seems that Larva could have perhaps actually gotten another Zealot there, but uh, but that's fine. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, while that was going on, looks like a probe actually does manage to sneak into the main here. Nothing too interesting to see. I mean, he already saw the lair making, so, uh, so you know, he knows there's no crazy early Hydra Buster or anything like that coming. And he's just gone for a Stargate Citadel this time. Very standard. Uh, no more double Stargate play. And we shall see what, uh, what Larva decides to do. Now, it's actually quite funny, I just realized, um, so on the last map on Jade, Larva elected to take, to take the close third rather than the far away natural third, even though that was far more common and I think probably better in ZVP, but on this map he elected to take the, wow, is his head, are his headphones like actually that taut? Is that, does he want it like that or is the wire just too short? That seems uncomfortable. Anyway. Um, ooh, that's very interesting. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so so on Jade, he took the close third when I thought he should take a far away third. On Electric Circuit, uh, you see a lot of Zergs taking the Mineral only as their third, even in ZVP. Uh, I mean, in ZVT, you know, it, it's kind of standard because you can just put your third macro hatch at that, at that base instead. But in ZVP, I see a lot of Zergs do it. And every time I saw that, I'd be like, you know, when I was casting Pro League, I'd be like, nah, I don't think that's a good idea. But then the pros kept doing it, so I'm like, alright, well, I guess if they're doing it, then whatever. But uh, but see, Larva, Larva, I like this, I like it. Even if you have that free mineral only, this, you don't have to take it. You know, you can just take the far away third anyway. And see, now he gets that fast fourth base. And the thing is, by taking that third base, you know, on most maps that means you just get a free fourth, right? At the main. But on this map, now that means he basically has six bases for free. Well, not really for free, but you know, he's got the extra two mineral onlys. But oh my god, looks like a Ling attack at the natural here. Nice pro block though. Means most of them are going to get taken down, but it looks like the Forge is now out of range of that cannon. But a couple Zelts going to pop out here and, and keep that alive. But cute little move here by Larva actually. Um, we'll still be able to be annoying with these Earthlings. There's probably a cannon in the main though, yeah, so they won't be able to do too much. But uh, yeah, so Larva basically, you know, once he gets himself set up here, he's going to have the two mineral onlys for free as well. That's going to be really, really nice, and I think that's how he likes to play as well. Uh, be a little bit more defensive, and oh my god, he might actually get this forge! That would be huge! That forge is upgrading plus two right now, and the attack, the plus two goes down. I'm not actually even sure if that was cancelled. Looks like another cannon goes down as well, because the zealots... Sky's too focused on his zealots that are at the zerg's natural for trying to run in here. He is going to get a couple zealots in here, but I don't know how much that's actually going to be able to do. Losing that forge is so critical. Looks like three zealots are going to make it into the main base here, and actually doesn't look like there's that many units here, so these can actually do a lot of damage. Uh, where are they going? Okay, looks like I'm just going to get the gas drones. Wow, this is actually going to be really effective. 3 plus 1 speed lots in the main base, there's only drones to fight them. They're trying to do some stacking here, but oh man, he's going to lose a good number of drones here. A couple more Zerglings coming out, and it looks like that's probably going to be the end of it. Yeah, just one, uh, one red health zealot left there. So he got uh, a handful of drones there for, you know, caused some lost mining time, but given the, that, that Larva took a fast fourth base here, and has done some disruption of his own. I think Larva is definitely in a good position in this game. Looks like uh, Sky, meanwhile, has actually been massing Corsairs here, just hiding them. I, I didn't see a second Stargate, so presumably that's just off the single Stargate. Somebody just typed something in the chat. I, don't, I obviously don't know what that, that says. I don't actually know even who typed it, because they used allied colors here, so I don't actually know who's Peach. <laughs> so I don't know who said that, or what, or what they said, but anyway, somebody said something. It was probably hilarious. 
Maybe uh, a fine Korean friend in the chat can tell us what, what that was all about. Anyway, the uh, the wall here at the front has still not been rebuilt. So this is still kind of open to uh, more counter-attacking shenanigans from Larva, which does seem to be uh, his preferred style of uh, attacking here, rather than engaging anything head-on. I mean, that's exactly how he won game one. And looks like these courses, though, do have free range, free range for now. Overlord Speed not even done yet. And uh, looks like they're going to get a few free Overlord kills here. There is a Spore Colony there at the uh, at the National and a few Hydras popping out, so that, so, uh, so those Overlords will be fine. And now moving out with his Ground Forces as well. Really not that many, though. Barely a control group uh, of Ground Forces there. But uh, it might be enough. And here we go. More is running in. This is what I was talking about. Without that wall there at the front, it's just going to continue to be annoying. Looks like he's running back here, just trying to make sure the Protoss isn't taking his Mineral only. That was totally Sonic, by the way. I didn't just drag a window in. <laughs> My window's full screen. I don't have another monitor on the right. Anyway, silly Sonic, or whoever his OBS guy is. I think he does have a separate. Do, do, do they have a separate OBS guy? Like I don't like Sonic. Sonic does commentary, and he has like a co one or two co commentators. And I don't know if they have like an additional guy to OBS or just one of the co commentators. Does it? I have no idea. Anyway, the army's moving back now. So a couple cannons got back up at the front. The course is continuing to hook around here, but I mean the Zerg's now on four bases, so you know Sky's gotta gotta do something uh, relatively soon here. I mean even if he just you know takes his mineral only, that would be fine as well. It doesn't necessarily have to attack, but you know if he just sits on two base against the Zerg's four base, that's not gonna go well. So uh, just as I say that, he does in fact take his mineral only, so that's okay. But the thing is, even even taking this mineral only uh, is not. Perfect because uh, ooh, uh, did those screen actually see that shuttle? I think they actually did. weren't able to snipe it, but um, because the Zerg's four bases are all gas bases, so even though you know it's technically three base to four base, uh, it's four gas against just two gases of the Protoss, and that's really not good for Mr. Protoss. Wow, she really looks like she doesn't want to be here. I wonder. I wonder if like she's actually being paid, or maybe uh, like Kim Carrier just you know. Asked her nicely, could you please, uh, <laughs> could you please be our star girl? Because if you guys didn't know, Kim Carrier is actually going to be casting the finals. It's ridiculous. Actually, he's not casting the semifinals, is he? I don't think he is. But uh, at the finals, it's going to be in some uh, university st stadium. They actually got Kim Carrier to cast it, which is ridiculously cool. And. Well, looks like uh, a drop going in to the top right. DT drop with all those Corsairs could be quite effective here, but very good uh, foresight though by, by Larva has actually built a Spore Colony there already, so uh, even if he did lose the Overlords, he'd still have the detection there, and obviously the Corsairs not going to do too much against those Hydras, so uh, this drop actually not doing too much here. And this is actually a very common tactic by Protoss to do these kind of DT drops on these vulnerable fourth bases, because you know, a lot of times Zerg might uh, get overconfident in their you know SimCity at the natural there, that they say, oh, you know, there's no way the Protoss can attack this, but just a simple DT drop with those courses overhead can be extremely devastating. Uh, and in fact, that's uh, that's how Larva dropped some games to um, Perfect Man, in fact, where Perfect Man just did some sick multitasking, did a lot of drops on the vulnerable bases, and uh, and Larva couldn't keep up with him. But uh, but I guess Larva's learned a little bit of a lesson from that, and is now defending those bases properly as well. There's a clump of units, by the way, at the... or a clump of red stuff at the back of Sky's base. Okay, no, it looks like... or sorry, of Larva's base. There's a bunch of Hydras running around. And they're going to engage his Protoss forces. No High Templar here. Pure Zealot Archon. It's okay in low numbers against Hydras, but once you get a certain, once you get to a certain level, it just become the Hydras just become increasingly uh, cost effective there, thanks to their ranged attacks. And it looks like uh, yeah, Gross backing up until ooh, all his High Templar come up here. So this is actually a pretty substantial Protoss force. And this looks like only Hydras so far out for Larva here. Haven't actually seen any Lurkers yet. It's gonna need some. I don't think you can uh, actually, you know, just win with with pure hydras here unless you get some really nice flanking moves. But I guess we'll see here. Yeah, it looks like the hydras just uh, getting poked around here. He's trying to get a get a decent angle here. He doesn't want to engage all in a clump, or else the storm's gonna devastate him. So not the best storms there. The first one is okay. Gets a few hydras. More importantly, larva's just kind of in full retreat here. A few more hydras running in from the back, perhaps trying to snipe some of these high templar. Uh, while the main army is away, how did that Hydra flank actually go? The Observer didn't actually catch it, it looks like. 
Um, so it looks like one of the High Templar might have actually gotten sniped, I'm not sure, but uh, the Pearl's army is still staying strong here, uh, getting whittled down a little bit, but still very, very scary, and a lot of Hydras, a lot more Hydras are going down here. It looks like more units are being brought over from the top right here, but, oh man, this is now very difficult for uh, for Larvac to engage, actually to engage here, because now he's got no more space to dodge the storms anymore, he's pushed back against his natural wall. So, uh, so taking the full brunt of those storms, but it looks like I think the Sim City there is a bit too strong for the Protoss armies to actually push into the natural. So just forcing the army back, and now just gonna just gonna use that map control to maybe poke around to the top right instead. I think the Sim City there is probably too strong from the break as well, but at least this gives him map control and allows him to take another base if he wants. He really should actually be expanding now. I think Larva's being a little bit uh, he's, he's defensive enough that you know there's no way that the Protoss army can actually break any of these bases, but you know with that map control, might as well just expand and, and go up on even bases with the Zerg. Uh, which is which is good for Protoss. Although even if uh, even if he takes say the nine o'clock base, he'll still be down a gas compared to Larva. So uh, got to keep an eye on that. Although actually now that I look at it, Larva actually hasn't taken the top right uh, gas there. He's been staying on Lair Tech, uh, not making that many lurkers anyway. So I guess he doesn't actually need all that gas. And actually, this third base is not as well defended as I thought it would be. Just two Sunkins there. It's a good wall, but not enough units to defend. And actually, this attack here at the top right might work here. Uh, a lot of links flooding out from those bases, but those links aren't going to do too much. But there are the lurkers that he needed, and there's no observer here, I don't think. So those lurkers are going to keep this base alive. Sky needs to pull back right now before he loses all those L to the front. Looks like he loses a few of them. Uh, and, and saves the rest of his army. Still no observer in sight. I'm a little bit surprised that there isn't one with the army already. I mean, this is fairly late in the game here. Even if he didn't see any lurkers up to this point, should really just get them anyway. Uh, just as a kind of a precautionary measure. I mean, the, the Zerg is almost inevitably going to get them. Nice uh, counterattack here by uh, by Larva. The main Protoss army is completely out of position here, so uh, Zijun is going to be able to deny the 4th uh, the base. He should snipe that probe. Yeah, there you go. Probe is actually the most crucial thing here in this attack. To stop it from building that nexus. And once again, by the way, Sky just kind of swinging his whole army around like a giant hammer. Not, it's it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm trying to find the best way to describe it. I mean, it's like it, there's not much, uh, I guess, finesse in his army control. He's just kind of wielding this giant Protoss army, swinging it every which way. You know, he's like swatting a fly with a sledgehammer. You know, you really shouldn't be sending, committing your entire army to deal with these small counterattacks. I mean, the reinforcements from his natural should have been plenty to defend that base. So he should have kept his main army out on the map. You know, keeping map control, making sure Sky, uh, sorry, Larva wasn't doing any sneaky runarounds like he did last game. And uh, and then the reinforcements can just keep his fourth base alive. I really don't like how he's just kind of having everything together. It's almost like you know he's got StarCraft II one A syndrome where everything's on the same hockey, except obviously he doesn't. He's just playing that way, which is not not good. Anyway, he's now making another move here into the natural, and it uh, looks like this time he might actually have enough units here. There's, there's no lurkers here to defend, just a single lurker there uh, in the sunken light. It is pretty well defended, and a bunch of links moving in here. He's trying to get a good angle, doesn't want to get stormed to death here, and looks like the lurkers moving in. They have a good arc there, and actually, I think this is not going to go well for Sky here. He's losing a lot of units in the back. Is he going to be able to break through here? He's got a lot more reinforcements, though. Looks like he's going to flank the flank attack, and actually, looks like the main defenses were actually broken before the, uh, the Zerg units could come in from behind, so this could actually... Do it for Sky. There's not enough units left for Larva here. Just a handful of, just a handful of lurkers and hydras here at the front is not going to be enough. Or is it more links flooding in? A lot of speedlings and actually only dragoons left. No high templars left to get rid of these zerglings. Only dragoons are not going to be effective at all against these mass speedlings. He's got just a couple of zealots. No high templars. More speed loss running in here. This is desperation time for Larva. He just needs to hold this attack. Can he hold it? He's taking so much damage to the natural already, though. Even if he holds it, I think he might still be in a very tricky situation while all this is going on. Sky's actually expanding to the 9 o'clock exactly as he should be. There's no way Larva can actually afford to commit any units to, uh, to even harassing that now. Every single Zergling counts here in this defense, and even then it might be too little. No, it looks like the attack has actually stopped here. No more reinforcements coming in, so... Larva just needs to deal with these uh, these seven zealots here. Although it looks like he might not even be able to do that here. If he loses that natural hatchery, that'd be really horrific. Uh, if he can at least save that hatchery, he can keep that base up and running. He has actually, by the way, taken the top right mineral only base. Uh, interestingly enough, so I'm not actually sure when he planted that. Ah, shit. Well then, hold on. Let me let me go see if Sniper Lot has something. Snipe a lot, save us! Snipe a lot! Snipe a lot! Oh, the good old buffer! Not even a buffer. What was that? That was like a stream implosion into GG. Anyway, um, Sky won that game for sure. 
so <laughs> well that was not ideal alright I'm gonna I'm gonna